Yeah, that's right, y'all. WBND Radio, Mr. Entertainment, and I have Apostle Vera Howard. She's doing an interview with the pastor of the Brown family, Pastor Carlton Lee Jr. of Flood Christian Church out in St. Louis, Missouri. Apostle Howard. Hey, this is your girl, Apostle Vera, and we have an interview today with the pastor of Michael Brown. Uh, you all have heard the story, the terrible shooting in Ferguson, and the indictment will be coming soon. And I've had the opportunity to speak to the pastor during the course of this whole tragic event. And today we're talking to him about uh, what happened and where do they go from here. You know, that's hard to counsel a family with such a, a cruel hatred type of um, event that happened to the to the son. So where does the family go from here? Where does the church family go from here? How does a pastor minister to a family of this nature? So just listen in today, and you're going to hear some awesome words of encouragement and ways to encourage someone who is going through a grief situation. And um, we're just going to keep the pastor, the family, and the church family in prayer. So stay tuned. Carlton Lee Jr. The name of the church is Flood Christian Church, St. Louis, Missouri. Pastor Lee, first of all, I'd like to thank you so much for this interview and your time this afternoon. I know that you have really had to be on your prayer wall, and with all that you all have been doing up there in St. Louis, Missouri, my heart goes out to you all. All the loss that your church family has experienced and your neighborhood experienced. I want to ask you a question. With the um, the situation you're dealing with right now, uh, with the loss of the young son of Michael Brown Sr., um, how has your church family been able to cope after such a big loss? Um, we have consistently been working hard with the family. Uh, we have been doing that. And then we have also, um, we've also been in prayer. I'm sorry. We've also been in prayer uh, with them. We've held prayer meetings at the church for everyone to come and be a part of. Uh, so we, we've done certain things uh, such as that for everyone. And I know that's got to be difficult as a pastor trying to console the parents. I mean, my I, my heart just goes out to them. Uh, how do you keep them from a pastoral standpoint? How do you counsel somebody over something like this? This is a pastor's nightmare to have to counsel any member who has lost a loved one and just dealing with grief. But this is an extreme, tragic situation. So how do you counsel a person like that? Um, you know, one of the ways that we continue to uh, counsel them is we, we, we continuously talk about um, the, 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 uh, the move of reconciliation. Um, I know you probably say why reconciliation, because we want them to really understand that they're in a pivotal place in history right now where they um, where people are looking at them. And so even though they, you know, they have experienced a great loss, um, people are looking up to them and to find out their direction next. So we really want them to be reconciled back to the place they were at before this incident happened in their walk with Christ. Uh, so we, we continuously work with them on one, uh, a stand steadfast and immovable, as Scripture says, be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the word of the works of the Lord. So we consistently keep their faith up, continuously pray with them, uh, fast with them. I, mean, I know our church has corporately went on a fast just for them uh, during that time frame. Wow, and I know this to be true because whenever I talk to you, you're texting him or, you know, you're in close contact consistently just showing them love. and It's almost as if your the church family and your personal family every day has had to just speak life over them and wrap your arms around them. And I commend you on that because that for, you know, pastors these days, it's nice to know you, there's still pastors there that are really going to be there for you and pray you through the rough times. And because a lot of your personal time has gone towards um, just encouraging and comforting this family every day, you know. So um, I thank you and applaud you for that. Now, with all of that going on, what is the climate right now? You're waiting for the indictment uh, with respect to the police. But what is the climate in the Missouri area or Ferguson or St. Louis area right now? Do you think it's going to be a riot or how are people responding or, or what's going on? 
the police are preparing for a riot. They're preparing for war, actually. And so, um, and so that's what it looks like, you know, what the direction that it will be in. Uh, last night, there were a few people that were arrested uh, for for going out. Um, you know, and it seems like the police are targeting it's just a select group of people that they want to get. So uh, it, it, it's very tense right now. Um, I know we went to go pass out food, and um, we went to go pass out food. The police, you know, uh, the police just showed up everywhere everywhere so you know it's 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 it you know it's just it's just unheard of uh the, their command center was right up the street from my church i mean they are really like just working on stuff and getting everything together so wow well with yeah. the preparing for war it sounds like to me that they already have a mindset that this gentleman would not be indicted because uh if it was if they had a mindset that it was going to go another direction um, that he will be found guilty, then, you know, it wouldn't be such a need to increase um, with respect to the African Americans. Maybe I should say that because I'm sure the Caucasians or those that have that mindset um, of hatred for African Americans would maybe result in violence. But it sounds like to me that they're preparing for a negative um, outcome or a negative indictment because I've been noticing the pictures of the police getting in position on the news and I'm like my goodness you know um, I don't think that they're, they're, they're preparing for a good outcome now now with that being said um, the family I'm sure um, uh, the the extended family how is the extended family dealing with this? Because don't you have to minister to them as well? Um, when I say the extended family, not the immediate Michael Brown's parents, but some of the extended family, do they go to your church as well, or are you in contact with them? Or, um, you know, do you have to minister to them as well? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, I, uh, I do. Uh, every week I meet specifically with uh, the father and his wife. And then as I meet with him, I turn around and I meet with uh, the siblings as well. Uh, so I, I consistently talk to them and, you know, cousins and whomever else wants to talk. I talk to them just at random times. Okay. And, you know, the interesting thing is I was uh, talking to someone who was from that area and they've expressed to me that racism and the type of spirit of intimidation has just been so prevalent there for years among our young teenage uh, youth or just African Americans in general. Do you find that to be so? I mean, is it that it just manifested itself in this particular situation, but this was something that was pretty much in the air or been going on for years, and then now it has escalated? Oh, yeah, absolutely. This has been brewing for, you know, like, like you just said, years. Uh, and no one, you know, it, it's been something that's been a river of leaks um, that has not been talked about. Uh, but now it's at a place, at a pivotal place where it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's all coming out. It's all coming out. America is seeing what's been going on. So um, with it being a problem over the years, how have the churches, come together or have they even come together in this particular situation or just in general to try to bring about change? I know a lot of times churches don't want to get involved with political events or whatever, but political events or events of this matter affect us as the body of Christ. So what has the churches on a whole done to try to unify um, that area, and then support this family. I mean, you're you're a pastor, and you have a lot on you. But have any of the other ones said, "Brother, can I hold up your hand? Can I come pray with you? You know, we want to come together as as the body of Christ." Or have you experienced that at all? You know what? We have had people reach out across the, across the line and say, "Hey, you know, let's let's try to figure out what we can do. How can we make this work?" Uh, and then we also have people who have not done it as well. Um, so, you know, we're in a state of just praying about everything, uh, trusting that God is going to, of course, prevail throughout this whole situation. Um, I've been reached out to by a lot of pastors here locally, um, but, you know, the sad part about it is there's still much division in the body of Christ, um, and I won't really deal with that for a long time, but, you know, I really would like to see a lot of our more multicultural churches try to reach out and try to be an assistant. 
um, or in some of our larger churches, who we have who've been silent throughout this whole movement. Yeah, and, and when you say multicultural churches, I can only imagine how the pastor could be dealing with a situation with this of this magnitude in the air there, you know, um, how the vision could creep on up into that multicultural church because that spirit of uh, hatred, you know, and murder that's been loosed out can permeate into the church. And I'm sure it's got, I probably need to talk to a pastor who has a multicultural church and see what type of effect it has had on that particular church at this you know, time. Now, you and I had talked, it's been very hard for the family. They haven't been able to work. There's paparazzi everywhere. You know, you're pretty much um, trying to uh, restore them, to protect them, to get, you know, just comfort them during this time. Um, Is it something that the church or we can do, or do you have a foundation? Do you have a number? Do you have an address? Do you have something where we can send money to that family to help them? We, we send everyone to, uh, they can make all donations payable to the Michael Brown Foundation, and that is at any fifth, third bank. And if there's not a fifth, third bank in their area, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they can mail it to the closest fifth, third bank uh, via cashier's check or what have you and make it out for the Michael Brown Foundation. Okay. And um, with respect to the future, um, not that you could predict the future or anything like that. Um, let's say that this isn't the best re- uh, report. He doesn't go to jail. What do you think is going to happen within that area? Do you believe there will most definitely be a riot? I believe that there will be civil disobedience, and it all depends on how the way the police respond. A lot of this has to do with their response to the whole matter. Um, we've been pretty much keeping some of the protesters in check and and intact, but then we turn around and we have this other stuff that's going on. Um, So that's my main concern is that, you know, we can keep both sides in check. We'll be fine. I think we'll be fine Uh, because, you know, what a lot of our people understand now is even if he does not get tried on this level, there's still federal charges that are still yet pending. So uh, we're we're waiting on on either way to find out what's going to happen. Yes, okay. And um, my goodness, I had another question for you. I think it's this white hair that made me just forget the question just that quick. <laughs> um, but I had another question that I wanted to ask you. For t- oh, you've had some high-profile figures come in there to stand with you all with respect to the sentencing. Can you tell us some of those names that came through there? I think Jamal, didn't Pastor Jamal Bryant come through in support? Yeah, Pastor Jamal Bryant has been in. I've been in contact with him every day. Uh, He and I talk quite frequent about everything that's going on. Of course, Reverend Al Sharpton, I'm the president of the local man chapter here in St. Louis. Uh, We've had Bishop Jakes to come in. Uh, Spike Lee has been in. uh, uh Benzino from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. He has wow. been in uh, Ayanla Van Zant has been in um uh, man, who else has been in? Um so many uh, uh, uh what's the guy's name? Young Jeezy has been in, Drake has been in, Wow uh, Lil Wayne has been in, of course Nelly has came down, he's been in, Chingy has been in, um uh, Vivica Fox was here just the other day, uh, 112. They came in. Jermaine Dupri came in. Uh, Common has been here countless times. My God. Uh, since this has happened. Um, August Alcine has been here. Uh, Trey Songs was here. Um, man, Mike Epps, D. Ray Davis, uh, all of those guys came in. Um, so when they come in, do they pretty much just meet with the family and, and give their condolences? And, or oh, and Maggie Johnson, that's what I was thinking. Wow. So when they come in, um, did they come in collectively, or did they personally come in and, and want to meet with the family and share their condolences? Or how is it done? Uh, they just contact uh, it's you? Been, it's been sporadic times where they came in, and they may call one of the promoters that have brought them in in, in the past, and they told me, hey, listen, I want to reach out to them and just show my love. I know for a fact when Jeezy came in, Jeezy reached out uh, to a friend of mine and, and said, hey, I need to get in contact with this family. They called me and said, hey, Pastor Lee, put us in contact with the father. 
uh, because this is what wants to, this is what young Jeezy wants to do. So he came in with a very good support, very good brother, very down to earth, uh, and just show love, and just show love. Wow. So if an artist um, who happens to read my article or listen to my radio show would like to get in touch with you, they can just do so. I can re- I can use your information so that absolutely. Can- okay, okay, okay. That is awesome. I didn't know all those people had come forth, and that's what we need to do. You know, at this particular time with a loss, we need to let them know. Now, I need to hear some more gospel artists coming through there. You named a bunch you know, of people. Oh, Leandria Le- 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 did come in. I'm sorry, I forgot. Leandria Le- Le- did come in. Um, uh, and she went down there to the memorial. But you know, we we do. You're right. I agree with you. We need more gospel artists to. Come. And, um, and it goes back to something that we're trying to plan uh, so, called Heal My City. So we're trying to do something along those lines. So, gospel artists, if you hear this, I want to tell you, you need to reach out to this Brown family. Now, we're not going to let the worldly artists, nothing's wrong with them. We're not going to let them overshine us with respect to going out and showing uh, support to our sisters and our brothers because this family needs us. They have been through a lot. They've been traumatized. Just imagine if it was your son, it was your daughter, it was your niece, your nephew, your family member and um, who had experienced such a tragic event. You would want the support of the globe, so we need you all to reach out, and I'm going to provide that information for you all. So, matter of fact, uh, Pastor, you can go ahead right now and just give the information where they will call in case they need to uh, reach out to you. Uh, they can reach out to me at 314-322-9468. Again, the number is 314-322-9468. Now, I understand that you're going to be with me in Miami, you and the family. Now, this will probably come out in an article after that date, unless I can um, get it in. Well, we have to go to print and to the articles. But definitely the radio listeners will hear that. We are so excited about you all coming down there. We pretty much want to do a prayer vigil for you know, you as a pastor for this family and just let you all know that we're holding up your arms and we're supporting you and we're here for you. And sometimes if you just show up in numbers and say, we got your back, that goes a long way, you know, or you have our love and you have our support, that goes a long way. So with respect to coming to Miami, um, is there any level of excitement, Pastor, about us getting (laughs) We We are very excited. Um, I talked to I talked to Mike um, a little bit earlier today. We were out passing on turkeys, and he is beyond excited. Uh, we're actually going to stay over a few days uh, for him to relax and to process uh, all that is going on. And then uh, we, we have to preach someplace uh, in Port Lucie, Florida. But, yeah, we, we, we are just, I mean, we're just ecstatic about all that is going on, all of the love, and we cannot wait to get there, to be with a you, Apostle, uh, <laughs> and to talk and to uh, just, just, just shoot some ideas off at you and see what, how you think we could better, you know, do some things that they want to do as well. That is so awesome. I'm excited about it too. The event will be at, uh, will be the event with Flo Rider. Actually, every year he recognizes the youth and he does a free event. And Miami gave him a key to Miami for his work there. And uh, throughout the the year, people don't know that Flo Rider and his team, with his manager Freezy and the rest of the team, they uh, give out um, educational supplies and goods and things to kids who are, you know, maybe in a less privileged environment, as well as they have a football team. As a matter of fact, Trayvon Martin um, was a part of the football team that he has, and he's just trying to do his thing and, you know, and keep these young people away from violence, away from the craziness and the madness, and try to instill hope in them and let them know, you know, you don't, you, you don't have to be another statistic, you know, so, and this is what we want to get out and we know that some things are avoidable, some things happen. We know that God is going to work that thing to the good. We know that we're praying that Absolutely. souls get saved. And, you know, we're going to be praying for your ministry, that the young people will come in and flock in there and just see the love and support that you have given this family. Now, with that said, with the hope, before we close, I'd like to ask you, Pastor, if there's, you know, if you were speaking to a teenage boy out there, 
um, what type of words of encouragement, what would you say to him about his future and, you know, looking at life a little differently, especially if they're seeing their brothers and their sisters so young being murdered and taken out. Sometimes our young kids can become a little hopeless. You, you know what I'm saying? Or Absolutely. they can become discouraged or despondent. So what type of encouragement can you give a young uh, a young boy or even a young girl, a teenage kid? What I would do is I would encourage them to be the one that set the trend. Uh, we have this thing that we do here in St. Louis, in particular at, at, at the church, uh, where we where we tell our young people, you uh, you do not follow trends, we set them. Um, we, we, and, and that's exactly what we do. We set the trends for other people to follow. And I'll, I would just want to encourage them to make sure that the people that are following you, that when they grow up, when they mature in life, they will say, hey, listen, you know what, I have somebody who – did not care what the product of their environment was, but they changed everything about the product of their environment. You're talking to somebody who has graduated from college, who uh, grew up on the wrong side of the tracks, did a whole lot of wrong. I was not a game bang or anything, but I did my fair share of wrongdoing. And somehow, some way, God still yet cut for me, preserved me, still yet saved me. So I want to encourage any young person that is listening or that may be reading this article uh, in the future to, if, you, if you're in the process of giving up, don't give up. Hold on tight uh, to the rope. God has a better plan for your life, and there's more to your life. You have success on you, and I believe that God uh, will take your wildest dream and make it even bigger than what you could have ever imagine. Amen, because they need it. to hear that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Never stop dreaming. Never stop dreaming. Amen. Because I used to teach school pastor. A lot of people don't know that about me. And um, it was sad. You know, we had metal detectors. We had kids walking with guns, you know, knives. It's I the beginning to... stage of, of prisons. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of our urban schools, they're set up to look like the beginning stages of prison. Yeah, yeah. And that's interesting you would say that, that they're set up to look like that. And our kids shouldn't have to go into an educational environment and feel as if they're walking in prison because that subliminally already puts a mindset there, you know, that says to them, my goodness, is this what I've got to look forward to? You know, because I, I remember the environment. I taught junior high school in one of the roughest areas of Washington, D.C., and I felt like even as a teacher I was walking into an imprisoned environment. So wow. our young people need hope. You know, they need uh, they need that encouragement. They need to know that they don't have to take this road or that road or this road. You know, that God still loves them. God has a plan for them. God has a purpose for them. And uh, we want to see those young people fulfill it. And I think, Pastor, you know, we might need to put something together for some youth globally. I agree. To empower the youth globally with their kingdom right and and the right to even be a citizen within the kingdom. And because so many of them have, um, it's it's sad, so many of them are suicidal, so many of them are being bullied and intimidated. And you know, you know the deal, you see it right there. And young kids we see up on Facebook who have killed themselves because somebody was intimidating them in school. And they're just in some some wicked times right now. So um, I thank you for um, that encouragement. And I'm just, Pastor, I'll tell you, I, my hat again goes off to you. I'm just so um, enlightened by how you have been uh, not selfish at all with lending everything you have to this family and other families. As you were saying, you all went out and gave out 50 turkeys personally out your pocket. And I do believe. Absolutely. Yes, and uh, dressings and everything, and you're still giving. You and you and the Brown family are still giving in the midst of a time which is so sad. And um, we just want to encourage you, and we appreciate you. And is, is there anything that you want to say before I cut this off, any last words, anything that you want to say to anybody, any information? Um, because I think I'm going to go ahead and air this on my radio, show, uh, radio places too. So is there anything that you would like to say to anybody um, as a last word? Yes, I would uh, encourage everyone to still continue to keep this family lifted. Uh, in prayer, we're asking everyone to continue to lift this family up in prayer um, and continue to lift this city up in prayer, the city of St. Louis, Missouri, uh, because of all that we are going through right now. Um, 
They tell us that we're in a state of emergency, which means the rules of engagement have definitely changed. So we're asking for everyone to just really just keep us lifted up in prayer during these perilous times uh, because we have absolutely no clue as to what's coming next. Um, as the family awaits this grand jury decision, uh, we ask that everyone continue to keep them lifted in prayer, in particular the, uh, the, the immediate family, uh, the Brown family and the McSpadden family. Um, you know, we, it just, you know that, that's all I wanted to say. We just need prayer like never before. So we're, we're soliciting the prayers of our brothers and sisters at, in, in across this country and across this world. Well, I know I'm sure going to get with our prayer warriors, and we're going to uh, tell them to lift you up. I'm going to put the word out and continue to, in, to put the word out. Um, because sometimes when you're in a middle state and you're just waiting, you know, um, we can forget. This is still, you know, it didn't just come out. So we're in that waiting state. People can sometimes get a little lackadaisical with their preparation and their prayer. And so as you, yeah, we don't want to do that, especially with you saying that they're preparing, you know, the police are preparing for what could be a riot or they don't know what's going to happen. We just want to continue to stay on this wall for the family, for the outcome. And, um, you know, God can still move in this situation. And, you know, oh, yeah. yeah, he can He can still move in this situation. He can intervene, uh, even the indictment. You know, though it's, it, people think that it's looking negative, but God can still intervene. So we just want to keep everything in prayer. And, again, I thank you so much, Pastor, for spending this time with me and, and just appreciate uh, your assignment and what God will have for you to do with the ministry God has blessed you with. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. And you'll be hearing from me soon, and I'll be seeing you in, right. in, in a few days. In a few days. And let's pray that none of this cold from St. Louis, or none of the East Coast, the East Coast cold from D.C. and New York go down there, because I want to put on some flip flops. Hello, I know. somebody. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> All right, you all, this is your girl, Apostle Girl, and I just finished speaking with Pastor Carlton Lee. He is the pastor of Michael Brown, and you all know the story there in Ferguson, Missouri. We're yeah. going to have to keep them in prayer, you guys. Until we talk again, I hear you again, know that God loves you. God has an assignment, a purpose, a plan, and that, my goodness, may the peace of the Lord be on you today. Bye-bye. Thank you. I received it so much. Amen.